Have you seen some of the images that are being downloaded from the James Webb Space Telescope? They're absolutely amazing. I love this first one they posted. It shows a cluster of galaxies that would be less than a grain of sand if you held it at the end of your arm's length. And what's mind blowing is we're seeing an image of what took place there 4.6 billion years ago. So how does some arrive at the idea that the Earth is only six to 10,000 years old, a magnitude of difference from what we know today? What I'd like to do to explain that is go back to the work of Archbishop James Usher as an example of how the past shapes our present. But I want to do it in a way that helps us understand how his work was cutting edge for that time. Having a rough time here today. Can't even read my script. I broke my coffee press earlier this morning. Things are not looking good. Now, James Usher was born in Dublin in 1520. James Usher was born in Dublin in 1581. Later, he would study at Trinity College there and be almost perfectly appointed to professor of theological controversies in 1607. He later went on to become the Archbishop of the Church of Ireland from 1625 to 1656. What he is best known for is his work, Annals Vesteris Testamenti e Prima Mundi Origin Deducti, or Annals of the Old Testament Deduced from the First Origins of the World. This was published in 1650, and in it he determined when the earth was created according to the Old Testament and the best historical knowledge of that time. Usher's work was not a unique undertaking. This was a preoccupation among medieval theologians. The Venerable Bede, almost a thousand years before, thought that the first day of creation took place in 3952 BC. Johannes Kepler, who lived very close to the time of Usher, argued that it took place in 3992 BC. Even Sir Isaac Newton joined the fray and claimed that creation took place in 4000 BC. In fact, over 120 different scholars put forward different dates for creation, all of them around 4000 BC. Why? Because they were all working off similar sources, mainly biblical and apocryphal texts, and assumptions about the age of the earth. They didn't have access to geological or astronomical dating that would put the date of creation some 13.8 billion years earlier. There are three very important departure points that Usher and many other medieval scholars used for dating the earth. First, the apocryphal book of Yasher. The book of Yasher was written somewhere around 750 AD. It's an apocryphal text and it claims to be the work of Yasher, the son of Caleb, who helped Joshua lead Israel after Moses. Like most apocryphal books, the book of Yasher takes an obscure biblical reference and then develops a whole text off it. In this case, the biblical references are Joshua 10.13. Is it not written in the book of Yasher? The sun stopped in the midst of the heaven and did not hurry to set about for a whole day. And then also in 2 Samuel 1.18. And it should be taught to the people of Judah. Behold, it is written in the book of Yasher. Now notice here, in the English Standard Version, they translate Yasher as a person's name. A lot of English translations, instead of translating as a name, translate it as the meaning of the Hebrew word. So it's the book of the upright or the book of the just instead of a person's name. Now, according to this apocryphal text, the book of Yasher, the flood took place in 2349 BC. Terah, Abraham's father, was born in 2127 BC, and Abraham somewhere around 2100 to 2000 BC. So there's your first departure point, our dates from the book of Yasher. Second, based on an allegorical reading of Genesis 1, these scholars argued that the first six days of creation stood for 1,000 year periods of time. It's interesting that they read these days as allegorical, referring to a thousand year period, 
but then argue that when we interpret the text of Genesis 1 itself, it should be read in a literal manner, 24 hours. Third, why do they take the six days as 1,000 year periods? Well, they base this on 2 Peter 3, 8. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Usher and others took the first six days of creation as referring allegorically to six 1,000-year time spans. So the first two days of Genesis take place from Genesis to Abraham, 2,000 years. Then 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus. And finally, 2,000 years from Jesus until the end of the earth. Now within these six 1,000-year time spans, Usher incorporated the following details. In Genesis 5 and 11, we have two genealogies. Usher and other medieval theologians assumed that these genealogies were complete and an unbroken record. And based on his translation of the Hebrew text of these genealogies, he calculated that 2,082 years passed from the first day of creation until Abraham. Then from Abraham leaving Haran until Solomon began to build his temple, 910 years passed. From the start of Solomon constructing the temple until the Babylonian captivity, 424 years passed. Now, one of the problems that Usher needed to overcome was that the biblical genealogies often overlap or were missing generations. For example, from Solomon to the Babylonian captivity, we don't know how long the kings lived. What we are given is how long they reigned. And oftentimes these were co-reigns or there might have been a gap or an overlap with each other. In order to solve these problems of incomplete data or conflicts, Usher turned to information from Babylonian and Greek sources. A good example of this is how he appealed to the dating of King Amal Marduk of Babylon to 562 BC. Marduk's reign gave him what he thought was a pretty accurate date to work from. In 2 Kings 25-27, we are told, in the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 27th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, graciously freed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from prison. Since Marduk only reigned two years, 562 to 560 BC, this gave Usher what he thought was a fairly accurate time point to work from. Taken all together, with some slight modifications for overlapping years and missing data, his six 1,000 years of time periods were corrected with only very, very slight modifications. Therefore, creation must have taken place somewhere around 4,000 BC. Now that he had a year, the question became, what time of the year did this take place in? Now, many scholars during that time thought that it took place in the spring with the spring equinox, the start of new life after the winter. Usher felt that it had to be in the autumn because this was the start of the Jewish New Year with the vernal equinox. Following this logic, creation had to take place on a Sunday as well, sort of a pre-creation day before God got to work on the first day of the week, Monday. And the reason for this is that the earth was formless and void on day one. So God had to have had something that he was working with on the first day of creation. That took place on Sunday, sort of a pre-creation. Given this, he then asked, what year around 4000 BC had its vernal equinox on a Sunday? And using Kepler's recently published astronomical tables, he concluded that this occurred in 4004 BC, more precisely on the 22nd day of October, according to the Julian calendar, around 6 p.m. on Sunday night. Before you go dismissing his thoughts and thinking, wow, this is pretty wild reasoning taking place here, what we need to realize is that he was working from the best data and assumptions from his day. But perhaps what is even more surprising is that his thought comes down to us today in the form of what is known as young earth creationism, the belief that the earth was created some six to 10,000 years ago. While we might look at Usher's work as a work of fantasy or imagination, we need to realize that he was working off cutting edge knowledge for his day. 
Stephen Jay Gould, the scientist and historian of science, wrote regarding Usher's work, Usher represented the best scholarship in his time. He was part of a substantial research tradition, a large community of intellectuals working towards a common goal under an accepted methodology. This little trip down history, I hope, illustrates how the methods and assumptions that we use for interpreting the Bible can yield some pretty interesting results. And that how even today, his ideas and methodology and assumptions impact us today. It's estimated that some 10% of Christians in the United States hold to a young earth creation type of view. So how did I get distracted in going down this little side path into Usher's work? Well, I'm working on a much bigger video that's going to look at the history of the Bible from the earliest historical datings up through the book of Acts and give you kind of a big overview of when, where, and how different things take place in the Bible. Sort of a big picture for you to hang different books and texts of the Bible off of. The other thing that hits me about Usher is just how the past impacts the present. I am not someone who just comes along and makes up my own ideas or anything like this but I've inherited so much from the past, and instead of rejecting something like Usher's work, we need to realize how this man was on the cutting edge of theology during his day. And hopefully we can be on the cutting edge of theology for our day. Until the next video, I'll leave you with a word of peace.